Le Creuset versus Stobe. Why does it have to be one or the other? What about Le Creuset and Stobe? Hi guys, and welcome to Uncle Scott's Kitchen. Today we are taking a look at some high-end enamel cast iron Dutch ovens and trying to decide should you buy a Stobe or a Le Creuset, or maybe if you're like me, is it less stressful and produces more happiness and especially more delicious food if you get at least one of each. Now recently I purchased a nine quart Le Creuset and a nine quart stove. And what I thought we might do in this video is use those two new Dutch ovens to kind of compare and contrast the two brands and show you the real world differences between the two. But more importantly than that, try and determine if those differences are indeed a big deal or really not. Are they nothing to worry about? We'll talk a little bit about buying strategy. After all, they don't give these things away. If you're gonna have more than one, what's the best way to do it? And if you stick around to the end, I will tell you the story of the black interior Le Creuset and how I came to acquire this piece. But I warn you, it includes a little marriage advice. So you younger viewers, not married yet, you may want to grab a pen and piece of paper and take notes so you know what's coming. Now the brands themselves don't need a whole lot of introduction. Uh, both are French made, high end, beautiful. Uh, they come in a variety of colors and shapes and sizes and both have a reputation for fantastic cooking performance and they're often similarly priced. Often in life when two items are very evenly matched it makes it difficult to actually choose. It leads to indecision. After all, if someone asked me, would you like to have a Porsche or a Nissan? I would choose the Porsche, easy decision. If someone says, would you like an Audi or a BMW? Then you start hemming and hawing and thinking about it. Now, conventional wisdom says that the biggest difference between the two are the interior colors. Le Creuset is known for having a lighter interior, whereas Stobe, is known for having a darker interior. And people say that that lighter interior on the Le Creuset's makes it easier to see down into the pot when you're doing some cooking, whereas maybe the stove with the darker interior makes it a little bit better and easier to brown meat. Maybe baking a, uh, an artisan loaf, maybe you get a little bit better crust with that darker interior. Is that true? So let's take a look at those interior colors and see if this is a big deal or not with a little real world cooking in both brands. I'm gonna start with the Le Creuset. Um, got a neighbor under the weather and my wife wanted to make her some chicken soup. Nice thing to do. And I'm gonna start out here by browning some bone-in skin on chicken thighs. Got the Le Creuset nicely heated. In goes some oil. In go the chicken thighs. And first thing I note here is that these are supermarket GMO thunder thighs. These things are mutant big, almost scary, but they fit in the nine quart Le Creuset with no crowding at all. After five or six minutes or so, I give these guys a turn and they did not stick. That's nice. And I got nice browning in the Le Creuset. Brown the other side, remove those, then in goes a sofrito with some carrots, onion, and celery, and this is gonna be part of the base of the soup. And indeed, I can see down in that Le Creuset very well. So the Le Creuset, nice browning, and you can see down in there. What about the stove? Here browning some beef, to make a little proposal in a stove. And I think the stove did a fine job at browning that beef. Here making a base for another soup, some ribolita, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. Got another sofrito in there, more carrots, onions, and celery. And indeed, I can see down in my stove just fine. So for me, as a home cook, that difference between light interior and dark interior is more of a nuance. It is not a big, fat, hairy deal, as they say, and I can turn out delicious food in either Dutch oven. And that also leads to indecision. Which way should you go, light versus dark? If you get one of each, you don't have to worry about it. You can choose either one, depending on the dish you're gonna make. Now let's further compare in the weight category. Now both of these Dutch ovens are solidly in the booty pan category. They have thick, wide, 
heavy bottoms. The stove with lid, empty, over 17 pounds, holy cow. The Le Creuset uh, with lid empty right around 16. And I had the Le Creuset full of Ribolita last night, tried to weigh it on the kitchen scale. Too heavy for that scale, I had to go grab the bathroom scale and... Your weight is 29.1 pounds. 29 pounds full of Ribolita. But I do note, my wife says that bathroom scale does tend to lie from time to time. Let's look at the handles. Uh, the stoves are a little smaller than the Le Creuset's, but I can get all four of my fingers on each hand through the uh, loop handles on the Le Creuset. A little bit more room and also can get all my fingers through there. So not a big difference there. What about the knobs? Some of the Le Creuset's come with plastic knobs. I think if you are paying up for a Le Creuset, make sure you get one with one of the metal knobs, a little bit more oven safe. And the standard knob on the Le Creuset is bigger than the standard knob on the stove. Stove is a uh, metal and oven safe. But in here, there's a, a little bit of a nuance and a difference between the brands. Um, with the stoves, you can get these decorative knobs and replace the, uh, the uh, standard knobs. And for example, I've put the cowl on this one. And I think that gives the stoves perhaps a little bit more personality if you get the rooster knob and use that when you're cooking chicken or the uh, cow knob when you're cooking beef, et cetera, et cetera. It kind of makes the uh, stoves maybe a little more fun to use sometimes, whereas the Le Creuset may have a little bit more of a classic look. Uh, let me make another argument for having at least one of each. Let's harken back to the great philosopher R. King, who posed the question, can't we all just get along? After all, are these brands rivals? They are in the marketplace, on the store shelves, in internet videos, but once you buy one of each and have them going on the stovetop at the same time, I often use both simultaneously in preparation of a single dish. No longer are they rivals. We are all buddies and on team good food together. Case in point, Ribolita, a delicious Italian Tuscan vegetable soup. Absolutely delicious soup, maybe my favorite soup in the entire world and one of the five or so dishes that I ate in Italy that actually inspired me to learn how to cook 15, 20 years ago. Highly recommend it, and I'll put a link to the recipe somewhere around this video. But it's a big soup, and there are a lot of steps and a lot of ingredients. I like to have two Dutch ovens going at once. Uh, Ribolita, it includes uh, cabbage, kale, don't fear the kale, uh, sofrito, potato, tomatoes, stock or broth or water, depending on if you want to go uh, vegan or not. And also importantly, cannellini beans, white Italian kidney beans. And when I'm doing the real deal, Ribolita, I start with dried beans. And I will often get those going in one of the Dutch ovens. And dried beans are always a variable because depending on the age of the bean, you never know exactly when they're going to get done. And then I prepare everything else in the second Dutch oven. Um, back here are seven quart Le Creuset's and seven quart stoves. I used to make this Ribolita using both of those, but because cabbage comes in an entire head and kale comes in bunches, uh, trying to get all that in the pot and keep everything else in proportion, things got really tight and the soup was all the way up to the rim there. So with these nine quarts, I can easily use an entire head of cabbage, the entire uh, bundle of kale and keep everything else in proportion and there's plenty of room in there.
Are we done though? No, because ribolita means reboiled. Uh, on day one, it is simply delicious Italian vegetable soup. We have to do a few more steps to make it actually into ribolita. And if you know anything about ribolita, there is bread in the soup. So what I do is line that Dutch oven with bread, add some olive oil, then ladle in the soup on top of that bread. then make successive layers all the way on up. So this ribolita ended up with an entire loaf of crusty uh, artisan bread in the soup. Now, are we done now? No, we have to wait overnight. And the next day you bring this back up and reboil it, bring the heat back up. And then, and only then, is it ribolita. Now, of course, you don't have to have a fancy, uh, expensive French Dutch oven for that interim step of transferring the soup back and forth with that bread step. But I do have to say that um, having nice stuff in the kitchen and seeing these guys flying in formation and working together really does make me happier as a home cook. Every year, my wife hosts a Christmas cookie party. She makes blank cookies and puts them in the dining room and her friends bring their kids over and the kids all decorate cookies in there. And in the kitchen here, I run the wine swilling, excuse me, the uh, wine tasting and am in charge of all the food. I made a couple of batches of kind of weeknight chili. And here again, I have both Dutch ovens going at the same time. Two pounds of beef in each Dutch oven. And I can't tell any difference in the browning between the two. Add my onions, add my kidney beans, add my tomatoes, the seasoning. And the stove and Le Creuset produce virtually identical batches of weeknight chili. So how do you decide? Um, it worries me. If I were to choose one or the other, I always have a little bit of indecision and doubt. Did I make the right decision? Did I make the right choice? Would I have been happier with the other one? For me, the type of person I am and the type of cook I am, it just makes a lot more sense for me to buy one of each. I'm happier, I can produce more delicious food, and I like having both brands. So, okay, smart guy, they don't give these things away. How is anyone supposed to afford these fancy French expensive Dutch ovens? I do have a buying strategy. And one thing I do is I keep a list and it's kind of like a game, and I may have 40 or 50 items on that list. Frying pans, chef's knives, uh, kitchen gear, Dutch ovens, on and on, and I kind of wait, and when sales arise, I am opportunistic, and I jump on them when I get the opportunity. For example, these nine quart models, normally $450, $500, it just so happens on this, this past Black Friday, this green Le Creuset went on sale for $259. I jumped on it. These stoves, for example, went on sale at Costco, and I saved um, about $120 on this model. Now, it varies from sale to sale, and often it's one particular color or one particular size, but if you're not too particular and you have your list ready to go, that is when you add that second brand. Okay, now how about the story of the black interior Le Creuset? How in the world did I come to get one of these? Here is where we're gonna talk about marriage just a little bit. Um, if you're young and you're gonna marry your high school sweetheart early on, or you get out of graduate school and get married early, typically neither party has much stuff. I got married after age 30. My wife was over 30 as well. And when you get married over 30, each party typically has some stuff. So my wife's stuff and my stuff when we got married became our stuff. And one of the things she brought to the marriage 
other than a 96 uh, Nissan with a hood that didn't match the rest of her car, was this guy. A, a uh, Le Creuset enamel cast iron Dutch oven. And I don't want to say that sealed the deal, but it didn't hurt. So we moved into an apartment together and I was doing some cooking. And I got the Le Creuset out and I'm standing at the stove top, minding my own business. And out of the corner of my eye, I know she's sitting over there giving me the old scowl. And I didn't think much of it and kept cooking. And I looked over again and she's just, just scowling and grimacing at me. And finally I said, you know, what in the world is going on? And it turns out that this Le Creuset was given to her by a now dearly departed relative and I wasn't to touch it. And I thought it was our Le Creuset, but apparently some things were grandfathered in. And this went back and forth. And after all, I have a YouTube cooking channel. I should have a relatively decent reputation for taking care of cookware, but no, I was not to touch that Le Creuset. And we kind of bickered back and forth. And finally I said, fine, I'm gonna be the mature one here. I'm gonna take the high road. I'll just get my own stinking Lake Crusade and you can't touch mine either. <laughs> and that, my friends, is marriage. And taking my own advice, I had my own shopping list and I waited and waited and after about two years, these guys went on sale one Black Friday and I jumped on them. I got a stove and then at Costco, I ordered a Lake Crusade. Now, at Black Friday, I run a cookware channel here. I load up on stuff to review, and I had a stack of stuff, and it was sitting there for a couple of months, and I hadn't opened either Dutch oven, and I had another friend that wrote me and um, said he, he and his wife had just renovated their kitchen, want to get a nice uh, Dutch oven. What did I think? Lake Crusade or stove? I said, well, I got a couple of them sitting here. I will open these up and send you some pictures. So I opened up the stove, dark interior, and I opened up the Lake Crusade expecting a light interior and got this. And you don't see these. And what I think happened is that maybe Lake Crusade did a special run of Dutch ovens for Costco. They were only two colors in one size and with those darker interiors. And they did that so that they could sell a bunch of them at a discount through Costco. And it was a screaming deal without ticking off all their other retail partners that had the traditional light uh, interior colored uh, Lake Crusades. So the moral of the story, never get married? No, no, no. Do get married. <laughs> so moral of the story, only touch your wife's stuff when she is not looking. Moral of the story is when you buy anything from Costco, double check to make sure it's exactly what you want. If it's exactly what you want, usually the deals are unbeatable, absolutely screaming deals. But if you're looking for, in the case of Dutch ovens, a wider selection of sizes, colors, etc., you may have to shop around just a little bit. So should you buy a stove or a Le Creuset? Instead of agonizing over the decision, the choice that made me the happiest was not one or the other, but at least one of each. So what do you guys think? Are you stoned people? Are you Le Creuset people? Are you kind of like me, kind of kumbaya? Let's all get together and hug this out and cook something delicious type people. Let me know in the comments section below. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time on Uncle Scott's Kitchen.